Alright guys, so part three of the video is mainly just a little niggly processes that you don't really see. So the car's driving fine, um, the gearbox is really smooth, it's really good to drive. The only problems were there was no speedo, um, the ABS light was on and the park light was also on because I left the gear selector in place and the reverse lights weren't working as well. That was the three main symptoms. So there are a couple of fixes. This is the original plug from the, that goes into the gear selector, basically. So you need to cut some wires here. So there's two big, like, holes, if you like, two big grommets here. These are for the park switch, the neutral safety switch. So there's a green and black. The colors may differ, but the principle is the same. And there's a white and black. So you need to cut both these wires and bridge them together. That's all you need to do to get the park switch bypassed, essentially. The car will always start, the park light won't be on. The reverse it around, you can see there's two wires here. They're the, if you're counting the pins, it's the second in and the third in. It's red and black on mines and solid black. For this to work, these are for the reverse light for the car. On the J160 box, the reverse switch is here. Now there's just two wires that come out. So literally all you need to do is join these two wires up to these two wires here. That's all you need to do. The final thing you need to do to get the speedo to work. Now, the A340 gearbox uses a reluctor type sensor. The J160 uses a Hall effect sensor, which is no good. The two different types of signal that won't work. So the way around it, there's obviously no sensor in the gearbox output now. So what you need to do instead is take the feed from one of the front ABS sensors. Now there's no real graceful way of doing this. I've kind of just rigged it up temporarily just now. But the third um, plug, well, there's actually four plugs on the original loom. The one with the red and blue and the white and red wires is the rear plug that used to go into the output for the gearbox. What you need to do is basically cut the wire and basically extend it. Now you can see that I've just extended it with some wire temporarily just to see if it works. I've basically extended it all the way up to the front ABS sensor. Now as you can see, I've not, I've not fin finished this yet. It's just a temporary fix until I've soldered it together. But what you can see is I've basically just spliced into the front near side ABS sensor and joined the two wires together. Now it's important that you get them the polarity the right way round because it won't work otherwise. Now don't ask me what it is because I literally just joined them together. So if it doesn't work the first time you swap them round and that'll give you your speedo, it'll work. And that's literally how you get the speedo working, the reverse light working and the park switch will basically let you start the car. The only thing that is still on is the engine management light. Now the only way you're going to get rid of that is by either putting some resistors into the remaining plug for the gearbox, this one here, the grey one, or you can buy a transmission emulator from loads of places in Russia sell them. Uh, Phoenix Engine Management is highly recommended, the guy knows what he's doing with Lexus and Toyotas. I would use him uh, to buy, uh, it's like an ATEMU it's called, uh, Alpha Tango Echo Mic Uniform. That's what you need um, to bypass, but to bypass engine management light. However, the car is a 2001, um, for MOT purposes anyway, uh, the car wouldn't fail an MOT, but a petrol car won't fail an MOT with an engine management light if it's made before the 1st of July 2003. If it really bothers you, you can put a bit of tape over the light, it's not going to be the end of the world, and you would just get an advisory on your MOT at least. But as it stands, this is the car running, you know, perfect. There's no issues really at all. The, I'm waiting on the centre console coming from Japan to cover up the majority of the hole. So for the centre console, what I've done is basically just got a sheet of alloy. Um, just from like a truck bed that I've done a wee while ago, sorry, a trailer bed. Um, now I've just basically cut it roughly to shape. Now I'm still waiting on a gator coming. And um, this gator is obviously far too small. But basically I need a slightly bigger gator. But essentially all it is is it's just a big bit of alloy that I've cut around the shifter because it does stick up slightly. Um, and essentially you would just need to cut this boot slightly bigger to, sh to cut around, you know, the hole. But it kind of, it covers up the majority of the, you know, the bulk really. And then I just need to basically make this a little bit wider for the, the actual, you know, gear stick itself. Yeah, it sits a bit far forward, so I'm probably going to have to trim right down. Probably not be able to use most of this, but you get the idea. It will basically fit in place so you can actually use it. Um, alternatively, you could possibly get maybe a different shifter. Um, maybe it's got a slight bend on it, that would also fix it. The only lights in the car are the engine management light now. Um, there's no ABS light. There's no issues with the speed or anything like that so literally you know the car's absolutely fine there's not even a park light on anymore um, and the reverse even works when you engage reverse 
the reverse light actually lights up, which I think is pretty cool, and it still beeps like the original. Um, yeah, so it's a really good swap. So the car is actually, um, well, it's provisionally sold. Um, we've actually got a guy interested in buying it, so it's actually sold. So this will probably be the last video you see of the car. It is a shame because it is a really nice car. Just don't really have any time for it. And I've got my JZX that I'm building at the moment, so I kind of want to get that finished. But I hope the new owner enjoys it and um, obviously finishes what the things that I've still got left to do, just tidying it up really. But yeah, I hope it brings many years of joy to the guy. So. As you can see, it's quite low kilometres this car. It's only done 99,804 kilometres, which is roughly about 60,000 miles. So it's actually a pretty good example of this car. Yeah, and I'm pretty sad to see it go, but like I said, moving on to better things. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a new car coming soon. It should be here in a couple of weeks. So we'll hopefully do a new video on that soon. Um, and yeah, um, we'll keep you updated with the next video. Cheers, guys.